Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mondovi line. It's coming up on the end of March and I thought it'd be a good time to give us all a update on what I've accomplished in the last few weeks. And a lot of little things on the layout, a lot of uh, detail stuff, nothing huge, but uh, all stuff that's got to get done. So thanks for being here as uh, my head pops up from the top of the potato warehouse in Osseo. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like, leave a comment, share, whatever you'd like to do. It's Sunday, and we're going to enjoy our morning. Thanks. So one of the biggest things I've done this month in the town of Osseo is I put down several layers of ground cover and scenery. We started out with foam, then cork, then paint then a layer of glued down dirt with Mod Podge, and then we started with static grass. And there's probably four different colors of two millimeter, and then there's some four millimeter, some seven millimeter, and I just started pinching in some of this 12 millimeter grass for some taller stuff. And after a trip to the hobby store, we uh, added a lot of these uh, shrubs, bushes, bunches of grass, uh, just all kinds of random growth that you would have in a Wisconsin town with deferred maintenance. Additionally, I got another box of super trees. So I started making a little end block here on the curve in Osseo. And first thing I did is I went to the craft store and grabbed some of this green matting. It's uh, from Joanne Fabric. Spray painted the top of it with some darker colors for forest floor. And then there'll be some deadfall branches and trees laying on the ground and then the trees will be added here and my plan is to cover this whole curve with trees going around here so I get a better background for taking photos from the inside of the train. Also here in front of United Milk Products Condensary, I built several trees and planted those. I have a photograph from 1940 that shows that they had planted trees along the siding. So by the late 50s that I'm modeling, those trees would have been a bit larger. So I pulled out the ones that I had. And these are built from five different super tree stems and pieces uh, glued together. The uh, trunks are covered with golden paste and painted, and then they're flocked with a combination of Woodland Scenics products and some uh, Super Leaf products. This is West Street in Osseo, and the background had a printout that was just sitting there against the backdrop, and I trimmed it up and glued it to the backdrop, and then added a couple of new trees to cover the transition from the road to the backdrop. Also, using some uh, artist pastels, I added a little bit of weathering to the road here. This is Highway 10 on the west side of Osseo, and I did some weathering to that as well. The backdrop is not glued yet, so that's on the project list. Right now, the trees are holding it against the wall. Also, using pieces from Scale Signs, I built and installed cross bucks here with the four track sign and the stop sign. This is going to be replaced with non operating wigwags once I build them. I have purchased a wigwag pair from Northwoods Models Sue Parts, and we're going to build that. That's on our project list. 
So also you may have noticed the power poles, telephone poles, if you will. I had added those a while ago, but I had no cross arms. So they're along the highway now with cross arms and they're at several places around the layout. And I'm not gonna stretch wires because I am definitely not coordinated enough to not knock everything down when I reach. So we'll just leave them like this, but they're definitely a simple detail that adds a lot. The, uh, the cross arms are, I think they're from Walther's and then the, uh, the poles are made from bamboo skewers that are dyed with um, stains from best trains. So this here is the Reed Murdoch pickle salting station in Osseo. Um, I built this freight dock from FOSS scale models and decided to use that as the pickle station here. And I made a base out of heavy mat board and built this little triangular scene on my workbench before adding it here. Um, I borrowed the pickle vats from Mondovi just for size. They're just loosely sitting there. And I have a new kit that I'll build and replace this and then put these back in Mondovi. But this is a uh, cardstock with uh, some texture paint and dirt over that and grass. And it'll get blended in on both sides. It's not glued down right now. The, the tree and the telephone pole are kind of holding it in place. But right here, we'll blend this with a coal pile. And I have a, a coal conveyor to build yet, and that'll go in that little scene there. And then on this side, we'll blend it in with some more ground cover and static grass when I get to building the general store scene and detailing this area. So I'll do that at the workbench and just plug that in as well. And now I started adding a little bit here, a little bit there and other places. The sawmill scene here in Mondovi is just kind of sitting this area, but it's gonna extend from this road here all the way down to the edge of the stockyards. So I haven't got around to building anything beyond what, what's been there, but I picked up some vehicles. So this, this uh, front end loader and, and this little crane uh, I picked up, I think they're Woodland Scenics. And, uh, but it's still not quite right for picking up logs and railroad ties, which is what is done here. The, the logs are delivered in gondolas and the railroad ties are milled here in the sawmill. And then those are loaded into gondolas and sent off to be creosoted. So I did pick up this crane here. It's from a uh, one of those, I think it was Walters or Lifelike, Lifelike uh, construction scenes where 90% of the stuff in the package was useless, toy-looking Tyco-type stuff. But this will be good once I, uh, I weather this. And then the, on the end of it, I'll replace that with a, uh, a claw for picking up logs which uh, I've seen 3D printed online. So that's some new construction type vehicles. Here at the Mondovi Grain and Feed Complex, I had uh, these pigeons added a long time ago, but only to this little building here. So I painted more pigeons and added them to the roof here. I'll add some white streaking, of course. So I added some to the top of the grain elevator. And then down at the co-op, I added some to the roof and upper window there as well. And I added just a few over here. Uh, I have more to paint, but my eyes are not what they used to be. But these are uh, mini print pigeons. Um, I have more of them to paint. I think I'm going to order a set from Jason Jensen Trains and give those a try too and see how those turned out. 
And every time I go to the hobby store, I usually pick up at least one Oxford die-cast vehicle. So I picked up this uh, Dodge Swepside pickup truck, because you can never have too many pickup trucks in rural Wisconsin. But sometimes you just want to drive your 57 Oldsmobile convertible. So I picked myself up one of those too, and the owner is sitting at the diner at the moment having an omelet before going to work. And if you don't have a pickup truck, you got to have a station wagon. So here's a nice 55 Buick wagon that's sitting behind the lumber yard. These four workers here, they're a little bit out of scale compared to Woodland Scenics. They were in the construction package where the crane came, and their feet are glued down to a piece of clear acetate. So I uh, use those and move them around in different places. Right now, they're working on a, a little path from the depot. So if you notice within the grass I put down, I left room for some roads or dirt paths, if you will, for the vehicles to drive on. And I added these crossings so uh, the ballast will go up to the outside of the rails and raise this a little bit, or I may add a piece of uh, the timber to the outside of the rail too. But I was ready to put these down, and then I uh, saw a picture online of, and remembered that they were beveled at the end. So that little detail really lends a lot. I did the same thing here. So you could walk from the depot platform across to the freight platform over here. And then I added the wood in there stained with best stains. I think that's uh, murky brown and a little bit of gray and there's probably a little bit of taco sauce here and there too. Additionally, I had a container full of mini prints, 55 gallon drums that I never got around to. And I had some Tishy train group drums too. So I took about 20 of them and painted them up. Put some of them on pallets like here. four on a pallet there and then I just randomly added them around the layout you know there's some there he's leaning on one there at the lumber yard there's a couple over there on the pickle station there's one there on the side of the pump house so I put them all over the place they're a nice little detail you can see in the standard oil building, there's a couple sitting there and a couple on that back building and a couple here underneath the staircase at the potato warehouse. And I put a couple here on the platform of the canning factory. They're all over the place. It's a nice little detail. In addition to the wigwags, here's the pickle works from American Model Builders. If you haven't heard, they're closed down. I think their owner either passed away or retired, but uh, AMB Laser Kits is, for the moment, no more. So I quickly grabbed uh, another pickle station and I'll build one of the platforms for Osseo and then save the other platform in the building for either Oliver or Strum. I also found sets of additional pickle vats that AMB makes, but uh, they did not have any available for a long time on their website. And I found these on a, um, a hobby store website and picked up, there's four closed vats and one open vat in each kit. So I'll use those at one of the pickle stations as well. So this train that you saw in the beginning of the video this RS1 I've had for, for a while, and it's got a nice uh, ESU Loke sound and, and a nice speaker in there from Georgia Bigfoot Trains. He does great work. 
But the reason I'm showing this is this uh, log load is new. So I uh, started making some loads for some of the gondolas. So when I'm operating, I can bring logs into Fund Brothers over in Mondovi. I picked up this Wabash flat car and changed out the plastic deck with a American Model Builders wooden deck. And so the implement dealers in this town, Osseo here and Mondovi, would get tractors, etc., delivered on flat cars. And so that's another um, operational addition I could do. I picked up this Milwaukee, Racine, and Troy gondola kit from Kalmbach, put it together, and then put a coal load in it. Again, the operations, the, they would get a gondola of coal like this pulled up to the coal sheds in each town, and they would hand shovel usually the, the coal into the bins or into piles because labor was cheap. And... I've been looking for another red caboose. Um, the prices have gone way up on the Athern Roundhouse, Chicago Northwestern wooden cabooses. Um, I got lucky and I found one that I bid on and got for half of what the other ones are going for. So this is my fourth one. I realized when I looked at them that three of them are wood and one is steel. Um, but these are all Chicago Northwestern cabooses and I was looking for an Omaha caboose which is the railroad that was a subsidiary and this branch line was an original chicago st paul minneapolis and omaha uh, station no one makes a plastic omaha caboose it's about 150 to 200 dollars for a brass one division point has a factory painted red brass one but you cannot find them anywhere and when they do sell, they, they sell for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I'm not spending that kind of money on a caboose. So these are fine. I'll, I'll weather it and it'll be just okay. So that's where we are this month at the end of March. You're looking at staging right now, which is in the next room. And I use these uh, to build trains off my switch lists. So when we start an operation session, we come from here around the curve, which will be the beginning of the branch line in Osseo. So for an overview, here's Osseo. And operationally, this has been a, a, a fun area because we have the canning company at the end of the spur and the condensary and the pickle station. So sometimes we have to pull out and respot, and sometimes we pull them all out, and sometimes we put in four reefers, and all depends on my switch list program and what it tells me I need. And on the actual prototype, they switch the stockyards on Tuesdays. Tuesday was nothing but stock cars on the line. So we can add that into our operations. And you have a potato warehouse that would get one or two box cars. This was the only grain elevator in Osseo. The rest were here and they were torn out. And then we have a lumber yard at this end of town. There used to be a creamery at the end of that spur and they tore that out and the lumber yard used it for switching after that. And we have just some scenery buildings, nothing operational here, diner and a general store. We'll have a farm scene over here. For now, we just go across this eight feet into Mondovi. And we'll just give a quick overview of Mondovi. We got a sawmill, we got a pickle station, a cement platform there, the larger stockyard. Along the back spur is the elevator spur. We got the Wendovi grain and feed, the Cargill flour mill, and the co-op equity. We have the depot in the center of town. We have a Sinclair dealer that was here at the edge. And then coming down here, passing Washington Street, 
There's a lumber yard in the middle there. Land Lakes Creamery in the back. Cannery, which gets two box cars usually on each session. And we have a standard oil dealer that had its own spur here at the end. So uh, if you go back and look at my last couple of videos, I did some operations videos and it's random because I'm using a dice to roll. And so sometimes I have a 15 car train, sometimes I have a four car train. Now, as I said before, I'm getting to the point now where right in the center here, and when I say center, I mean from the back of the room here, which is just a joining from one side to the other. Between these black lines here, you got one there and one there. That is, I think, 30 some inches, not quite 33. And that's going to be coming straight out here as a peninsula. Oh, there's my dog. As a peninsula and then a nice big turn around here, split in the middle with a backdrop. And I'm getting to the point where I'm itching to start building this. So I can come around the right side in Osseo, come up Aliva around the end, back through Strum and over to Mondovi. So we're gonna consider when we wanna start building that next. So thanks for coming by, enjoy the video. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Look at my community tab for some more content. Find my uh, Facebook page for the Mondovi line and join that if you'd like. Thanks for coming by.